the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Those who may be standing in the sun, the weather may not be the best, 
but it will be worth it at the end of your stay. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yesterday we began to discuss the subject of revival and the awakening. We considered Psalm 40 and how that the Bible says from verse 28, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. The Bible says, He does not faint and he is not weary. There is no searching of his understanding. And then he says, he giveth power to those who faint and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says that even the young men will be weary. The youth will utterly fall, he says. But then verse 30 says, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as the eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and the Bible says they will not faint. Then we began to discuss how that it is very human to be weary. It is very human to be weak. You don't have to be an unserious Christian. All you have to do is to wear a mortal body. And eventually somewhere as you sojourn, you will find cause to be discouraged either because of the vicissitudes of life or because of the events that happen around your life. There are times that you are overwhelmed by economic issues, spiritual issues, marital issues, and so on and so forth. So we established yesterday that it is not unusual to find a believer in a position where you are utterly discouraged. This year, many have lost loved ones. Sadly, some of you seated here. Many of you have lost money, probably. Many of you right now may be battling with ill health. Many who are due promotion probably are still trusting God for it. Others for a job. Others for some form of advancement or the other. So it is not unusual to find people weary. And then we did discuss yesterday that pain and weariness has an advantage that it plays in the life of a believer. It is strange, but it is so. Number one, it brings you to a point where you see that God is greater than every other thing. Unless you get to a point where everything truly fails you, you will not see the all-surpassing power of God at work in your life and the need for Him. Many times the Bible says, some trust in horses, others chariots. As humans, we do not easily give up what we have built strength around. So many times God will step back and allow those things fail you so that you see how frail human connections are, how frail money is, how frail intellect is. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It says, Lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Then verse 7 says, Be not wise in your own eyes. It says, Fear the Lord and turn away from Him. Hallelujah. It brings you to a point where you see the futility of anything outside of Christ. Number two, it brings you to a point where it purifies your heart. When you are downcast in life, there is something it does to you. There is no need to, to pretend. There is no need to be afraid again. Because everything you are afraid of has happened. Can I tell you this? One of the ways that you conquer fear sometimes is not to run away from it. Is that the fear comes to you. And you will find out that it did not have the kind of power you gave it. The Lord is my light and my salvation, he says. Whom shall I fear? The red issue looks like it will overwhelm you. But then you get into the red issue, you go to police station, you come back, you discuss with the landlord, and at the end of it, you find out that it did not have that kind of power to have stopped you from sleeping, to have stopped you from praying. When we go, when we are in difficult situations in life, it, it sustains the power to build spiritual strength and stamina. Hallelujah. So that it was an encouragement yesterday. Do not waste your seasons of pain. 
Do not waste your seasons of disappointment. For everything that brings you pain, listen carefully. For everything that brings you shame, for everything that brings you embarrassment, there is a window from it that can lead you to the next level of your life. I assure you, you can waste that situation in lamentation and regret and blaming people. Or you can say, Lord, there is something you are doing through this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can remain there while I'm complaining or I can choose the option of fearing no evil. Why? Because even in that place, I am conscious that you are with me, that your rod and your staff. Rod is for correction, staff is for direction. You need both of them. It is not only the staff, you also need the rod. Because he that he loves, he chases. And there are times that when we are full of ourselves, we are full of our ambitions, even though we claim, Lord, we are giving you the glory, but in truth there is that pride, it is based on disconnection. His rod and his staff. They have spectacular ways of bringing comfort. Are we blessed? But then, that in the midst of every situation and chaos, the greatest advantage, listen carefully, the greatest advantage of adversity and downtimes in our lives is that it leads us experientially to seek Him and love Him. By the time all else fail, your certificates, your relationships, your health, you are left with no option than Him. And the thing about the jealousy of God is that you cannot truly find him when you are seeking him alongside other things. He will step back and allow you to focus on those other things. When they fail you and you give up on them and then you come to him like Jacob came to him. The first time he appeared to Jacob in chapter 28, Jacob had his own ambitions. There were other things so the Lord was in that place but he did not find it. The next scene of his life would be his frustration in the house of labor. Exchange a wife he would have married, he went to, defrauded him many times. By the time we get to chapter 32, he had become wiser. He told his wife, I love you, but please leave me. Captain, I love you, but please leave me. The Bible says, when he was alone, God said, now you are ready for me. He came to him, and Jacob said, I made this mistake before. Now you have given me a chance, I will not let you go. Unless you bless me. Many people find God in times of discomfort. There is something about the human spirit and pain. We don't seem to pay attention in an atmosphere of comfort and convenience. Something must happen to you to call for that emergency that makes God a priority. Now they diagnose you with a sickness that the hospital cannot do anything about. All of a sudden, the tiredness that was an excuse for lack of prayer suddenly vanishes. You will now have the strength to wake up in the night. To your shoulder, three days dry fast, you thought you would die. After three days, you can still go some more. So that energy was always there. Are we blessed? But well, let me tell you something about God. The dealings of God with a man is not forever. When God is done with you and you have been tried and refined as gold, then you are ready to see His power. And this is what we are here to do today. Revival happens when individuals through brokenness attract the presence and the power and the grace of God. Listen carefully. Through brokenness, not just through your prayer. You can pray, you can fast, you can study the Bible, but if you are not broken, you will never truly find the power of God. We discussed yesterday that the strength of God does not come upon the strong. When the strength of God comes and finds you strong, it will go back. His strength is only made perfect in our weakness. Are we blessed? When we seek the Lord with all our hearts and we prioritize Him, Lord, I have sought you and I have sought money. I have sought you and I have sought reputation. But thank God for all these things. For right now you are the object of my pursuit. My eyes are on you. We must get to points in our lives where Jesus is not one of the many useful things in our lives. Where he stands alone. This is not the issue of church. 
This is not the issue of being a man of God. A revival is a wasted adventure until it sinks and, and, and fulfills that agenda of enthroning Christ to your heart to become your everything. To my treasure, my priority, who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty, O Lord, it's you From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. More than promotion, more than breakthrough, more than prosperity, more than children, more than marriage, more than education, more than a visa to travel abroad. Lord, these things are wonderful, but you stand above them all. Now a revival has happened to you. Until that happens, you can go to a revival program and not have a revival. You can fast even for 100 days and at the end of it you are still full of all those things. Until God looks at you and you become like a mirror, he must see himself when he looks at you. That is proof that you are full of him. When he looks at you and the car flashes back at him, that car is your God. When he looks at you and your ambition flashes back at him, these things are wonderful. You don't ignore them, but you exalt him above them. Believe them. I lift you high. Something. I will pray 
Some of you perhaps are sitting here right now with deadly medical reports. High blood pressure, some tumor, some cancer, some demonic thing somewhere. And for some of you, the hospital has given up on you. I bring you good news. This mighty God is still alive. I assure you, Jesus is still alive. He's alive. I know you are here. Healing in your presence. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. I know you are here. You are here to take us high. I know you are here. Precious Holy Spirit. For some of you, it's all kinds of oppression. You came from families and regions that will not let you rest. Just when something good is about to happen to you, here they come through your dream realm. All kinds of demonic dreams. Secondary school, writing exams that don't finish, animals pursuing you, all those similitudes of spiritual things. You will get up in the morning and a door that you are already seeing open, you will never step into it. Oh, let God be true this afternoon and every night. And there are some of you here, listen to me. Yours is not delay, but you are, your pace is too slow relative to the timing of destiny. The unit of destiny is time. If it takes you so long, something that can be done in one week takes you one year. It's not normal. If a child starts speaking at seven years, that's not the worst, but that's not the best either. For some of you here, even though you are officers, or maybe people in my who came from this conference, there is a call of God upon your life. But as it is now, you are the only one who knows you are called. Nothing around you proves that you are called. No grace, no message, no demand upon your life. Some of you are probably business people, and there is no body who places a demand. Every time trouble is about to happen, it will wait till you get there before it happens. The police is about to arrest somebody, they will wait until your car is there. They now say, Stop. It's not normal. For many of you, you have truly not experienced what we call the favor of God. You've heard people talk about it. You believe such a reality exists. But I'm hoping that today, within the few minutes that we have, that something from heaven will come upon your life. Yeah. And you will leave this conference. And all of a sudden, someone who has forgotten you will suddenly begin to call you. Then you will know that you did not come to waste your time in God's presence. My prayer for you is that you believe that, number one, we are not joking. Number two, I want you to believe that this is not just church. Okay, let's attend the program. You do that, you will watch others receive their blessings and walk away. There must be a desperation in your heart. Are we together now? Yes. And then I want you also to believe that today, this afternoon, is also a time of judgment upon the wicked. Yes. Listen, listen. There are people who do not let men go. I tell you, it takes the power of God to clear them out of the way. But the monetary forces and humans who are in fraternity with darkness. For as long as I'm alive, you will not rise this day. And we shall declare a thing and it shall come to pass. When God himself has not said so. Let me see what will become of this family. And God says, sit back and watch what I can do with people. Are we blessed? Yes, sir. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. You're a cowboy who's close to that picture. He's not a man, no. He's not a man, no. You're a cowboy who's close to that picture. Please listen to me. There are Egyptians that need to be drowned in the sea to give you peace. For us. The Bible says, and the Lord of peace 
shall himself give you peace. Always and by all things. That everything that has represented shame and reproach. Some of you walk, but there is an embargo of shame and reproach on your life. You keep passing the helpers of your destiny every day. Some of you, even in this place, such a blessed place, strangers come into the migration service here and they receive the ministry of destiny helpers. And you are here, you are a staff here. And there is nobody who has looked upon you with kindness. Please don't say it's normal. Don't say it's normal. A stranger will come here and without knowing him just because of the grace he carries, people will bless and help them. But even you hear the privileges that surround your territory here. Please help me. I think some people are waving the please collect it from them. Hallelujah. It's for you to be angry to say, Lord, after this conference, my life must move forward. I made up my mind that everything God has for me in Christ, I will receive it in my lifetime. And then one of the things I'm trusting that we're going to break is the spirit of untimely death. Yes, Please pay attention. There is a spirit that is moving across the globe and across Africa. It just marks people that have great destinies and just take them like that. You call it accident. You call it sickness. Shall not die, he says, but live and declare the words of the Lord. God raises someone to be. I, 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 I prayed for a family sadly, I think some months ago. Just the gentleman that God raised to be like a savior, just when he was about to settle down in life and destiny and then to start blessing the people. What happened? It was a bike that killed him. Bike. That's not how God transits people. Listen, you have to choose what to believe in this kingdom. Don't say this person loved God and died. Thank God, but you are not there. Define the truth that you believe. Yes, Don't sit down and tolerate things, destroying your life. Some devil is in your body that will not let you go free. You are collecting your salary as much as it is. You are finishing it on those drugs. People become sick in your house just when you collect salary. By the time it finishes, they are fine on their own. What sort of thing is that? Until you are angry in your spirit and say no more. There's something about Satan when a man becomes serious. He knows that you are ready for that door to be open. Anything you tolerate is permitted to remain in your life. Anything. Are we blessed? So as we begin to pray, I'd like for your heart to be open. For some of you, if the devil cannot get you, he keeps troubling all those connected to you. And the headache that comes from their issues will not let you rest. You are not the one with the problems, but the issues. My brother is in police station. My sister just got admitted. My auntie, something is wrong. And you sit down and you can't get your mind to, to, to work. You are failing and fumbling in the office and people don't know why. Because when you sit down, you are thinking about so many issues. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the things again that God will help us destroy is the spirit of the waster. There is such a spirit as the waster. I collected one million. What did you do with it? I don't know. I know I didn't spend it, I don't drink, I don't smoke. But what did you do with it? Do you have a land? No. Are you on any building project? No. Do you have plenty children? No. Are you sponsoring someone? No. Where did the money go to? I don't know. It's the spirit of a waste. There are people today, the blessing of the Lord that has come into their hands, they should not be in a rented apartment again ever for the rest of their lives. Are we together? And then we are going to also pray. Whatever is yours 
that is in the hand of someone else. Esther was seated in the hamlet and Vashti was occupying her seat. It was a wrong occupant. When the time came, God moved in a powerful way and with honor and dignity he brought her there. When God had anointed David to become king, he was still in the wilderness and Saul was still sitting on the seat. Can I tell you this? Prophecy can overturn you. I tell you this. There are exchangers of destiny. You find yourself living a life, you know this is not the script of my destiny. What God showed me is not what I'm living out. And then also, your spiritual fire, we cannot ignore that. For some of you, this is not how you started with God. Your zeal and your passion towards the things of God. You were passionate about God, good friends, godly people, but now you look around your life and there is nobody around you among your friends that loves Jesus. Visionless people, respectful people, who are not bringing profit to your life spiritually or upwards. May God separate you from such people. But I'm going to be praying for the sick. Please, I'd like you to believe that Jesus still heals. Oh, Apostle, but they prayed for someone I know and he still died. I agree. Thank God he died or she died in Christ. But for you, I want you to make up your mind that Jesus still lives. He still lives. He still lives. He still lives. I believe in the healing power of Jesus. I'm telling you, when you are sick, many things happen to you just because of sickness. One, your finances go down. Do you know how expensive drugs are? There are people who swallow drugs that will fill my hand to be able to sleep for at least six hours. There are families where the women are the men and the men are the women. The only thing the men do as men is to give birth or to get the wife pregnant. That is all. Responsibility is zero. And they don't have to be bad people. Nothing works. The woman is the one building the house. The woman is the one paying children's office. The woman is the one doing everything. And by the time she's 40, she looks like 60. You are saying, good afternoon, mommy. She says, no, I'm just two years older than you. What of men that nothing leaves in their hands? Some of you may be like that here. I'm not insulting you. I hope you understand. This is a meeting so that by the end of it, you can leave knowing that something
And while prayer is going on, destiny altering prayers, you are just thinking of browsing or doing all of that. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Please rise up.
to the heavens. And I want you to say this after me. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you resurrected for my justification. Right now, I make you Savior. I make you Lord. I make you King over my heart. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive new life. I receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. From today and forever, the power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of hell, and the power of the grave are broken over my life. I declare that I am a child of God from today and forever. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I present to you the ones Jesus died for. They have acknowledged your Lordship. And I pray in the name of Jesus. According to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that he gives you a new beginning. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I declare that you begin to walk in victory. You begin to walk the supernatural life. In the name of Jesus. Because you are here, let me start ministering from you, madam. Mama, where are you coming from? Yes. Huh? Because, huh? I'm looking at this, I'm going to pray for the rest now, but I've started the ministration. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing there's something that connects me and you. From Lantern. You are from Plato State? Lantern, yes. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hands. Every power that will not let you go, release her. Out now! In the name of Jesus Christ. Please open your mouth, everybody. Father, give me a visitation. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who gave their life to Jesus, you can go back to your seat and join us. Just give it to You can go back to your seat. Everyone, please pray. Inside, outside, lift your voice and begin to pray. And there people of prayer here, Nigerian immigration. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it again, in the name of Jesus. Every lukewarmness. Every Around my spiritual life, I declare fresh fire from heaven come upon me. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, fire from heaven.
carry anointing while I'm praying. Just bring them out. We'll be very fast. We have a few minutes, but God wants to move now, whether inside or outside. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm seeing fire just rising from the ground. And I'm seeing burnt things that look like chains. Now I stretch my hands inside and outside. Father, I'm seeing the number 13. One, three. There are 13 people. The power of God is coming on. And the grace that is coming upon you is a grace that is opening doors. 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 Right now. Right now. Take that fire. Doors. Help them. Help them, please. Please bring them out. And see doors open. Doors open. Shalata Tebalans. Doors open. That fire is coming upon you.
this is blood pressure. I want to pray for you so that they will not tell you that you have BP. I'm about to pray for the sick show in the name of Jesus Christ. I may not ask you to come out for social reasons, but there is an officer here by Jumbo right now as I'm speaking. There is something in the office, and if I don't pray for you, they are going to relieve you of your work. I'm saying this. You need the mercy of God. You know it is not like a revelation to you. There is an ongoing case right now with you. Please, let me pray. Maybe a few people that I'm seeing. Please, whoever that person is, there is someone who are in serious trouble. I'm telling you, you need the mercy of God. If not, with what I'm seeing, I'm seeing them sign a document, and they are relieving you of your work. We have to pray. There's something God can do about it. Amen. Not you, sir. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you, sir. This demonic thing, it lets you go right Amen. now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bring a lady for me that shouts right now under the anointing. I just saw fire. Just move. Right now. Please bring her. There is a lady here, even though you came for this program, you are not part of the officers here. But the reason why God brought you here was so that that anointing will come on you. That anointing is coming on you. I don't know who that lady is. You don't have to come out. But right now, the power of God, where you are, the power of God is coming on you. It's a dimension of the prophetic that God is activating for you. Let that well be opened in the name of Jesus. My dear, in the name of Jesus Christ, every embargo of darkness, you don't have to bring them out. You don't have to bring them out. In the name of Jesus, every embargo of darkness over your family, this lady out here, I declare, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, one more person before I begin to pray for the sick. I'm seeing a family with three, four ladies. It's like there is a pattern of barrenness. Barrenness. People don't seem to give birth, or maybe they take in and lose the baby. Or barrenness. Is there sickness? I don't know who that person is. I want to pray for you very quickly before I pray for the sick. Please make sure you are telling the truth is the house of God. Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, be delivered from it now. Amen. Be delivered from it now. Amen. Be delivered from it now. Amen. According to the time of life, you will return with your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Now you are trusting God for a healing miracle. I want you to lay your hands right there. I want to pray for you. You have to worry so that you won't return. Please lay your hands, whether you are outside. Thank you for those outside. I know the sun is so hot, but I assure you that it will be worth your coming. Lay your hands there. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. You can also stand in for your loved ones.
every spirit, every devil of infirmity that has played anyone here under the sound of my voice and those who might be following online in the name of Jesus I command that spirit to let you go now I command that spirit to let you go now and in Jesus name I declare be healed I'm seeing in my vision many men are being healed from high blood pressure high blood pressure be healed now Sugar diabetes be healed now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is healing eye conditions right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In fact, there's someone I'm seeing in my vision who have met the doctor and they're suggesting that the growth you are having towards the lower abdominal area may require surgery. The power of God is touching you right now. I'm seeing the fire of God coming on someone's eyes right now as I'm speaking. It is healing right now. The fire of God is coming. Help her please. Coming on someone's eyes. There is healing right now. In the help her please. In the name of Jesus Christ. Healing. Heart palpitations. Sometimes you have irregular heartbeats. In the name of Jesus, may the power of God touch you now. Amen. Touch you now. Amen. Who is Josephine? I'm hearing a name, Josephine. Is there someone with such a name? Josephine. But wearing like yellow or something like that. Is there someone like that? What's your name? Oh. I want to pray for you. When are you doing? When are you due? December. December. I want to pray for you. I'm seeing light. Help her. Look at this. I'm seeing. Madam, please come. Please let's be sensitive, brother. Where are you from? My dear? Something is happening. Where are you from? Are you related to her? Because I've seen light touch connecting two of you. I want to pray. Look at this. You see, I'm seeing a terrible situation where this lady is bleeding on delivery bread. And the Lord is saying we should have that in life. Mama, God wants to heal you from back pain. Yes, ma'am. Back pain. Don't worry, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I'm saying back pain. God wants to heal you from back pain. In the name of Jesus, we agree with you. This will be a normal delivery. And you will deliver like the Hebrew woman. Every weakness in your body, I come against it in Jesus' name. Mama, the power of God is coming upon you. And in the name of Jesus, hypertension, I cause it now. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Is saying I should pray. I don't know who, but I'm seeing an officer posting like the post, how you post people out of uh, this place. Maybe I don't know. And I'm seeing that God, I don't know for whatever reason, God wants to change it. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who this affects. I'm only a man of God and this. In the name of Jesus Christ, every posting. That needs to be readjusted properly. I agree with you right now. Let it happen for you at this point. We are still praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus. There's someone with severe migraine. You sleep with headache, you wake up with headache. Let a miracle happen for you. Right now. I'm seeing several. There's a lady, the left side of your the left side of your breast. There is a lump. And I want to pray for you. Because it's not just a normal lump, this is demonic. In the name of Jesus, that demonic lump leaves your breast now. Amen. The 
Lord is also showing me a gentleman. You have pile, very big, severe pile. In the name of Jesus, whether you are inside or outside, let there be healing for you. Right now. Let there be healing for you right now. Severe and born. When you take anything that has such, you have severe and born. I am praying for you right now. May the power of God touch you. In the name of Jesus. Ah. We are going to pray, but I'm seeing somebody with blood that was from a goat and they poured it somewhere in the vicinity of your place here. Not the chapel here, but around the Nigerian immigration. I'm seeing this was not in the night. The point, this is somebody that was brought, maybe I don't know if it's a, you know, like somebody that was brought not from this country, came in the guise of something and they thought this what God is going to be my eyes to see. And this thing about many things is to begin to make many, many a victimization of many believers, including the death of people. If the Lord has sent me, I come here in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Everything that has been planted upon this soul to victimize the church will be declared null and void now. Null and void now. He was the one who fell into it. Let me prophesy to you, my children in the Christian service, that anyone who beats any beats I call on the God of my covenant, and in the name of Jesus, they will fall into my covenant. Jesus be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are going to pray. Again, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I pray that God grant His grace. Because I'm seeing a bit of chaos happening in the Nigerian immigration service here. No, listen, not chaos that evil. Something that has to do with in the name of Jesus we decree and we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit victory remains for the church by the power of the Holy Spirit please stretch your hands help me I want you to stretch your hands towards this prayer request as I bow my knees you don't have to kneel just stand if you are here to submit your request, just do it. But we are praying. I want to lay my hands on your request. This is the most accurate representation of your needs. We may not have time to minister to everyone, but stretch your hands, everybody. And let's pray. We need to declare these Egyptians that I see today. I see them no more forever. Some of you, what you are waiting here is a report to God for the trouble that is plaguing you in your office. It's time for it to Jesus from the dead. 
we hereby declare it, we turn it for a prayer request to a testimony. We turn it from a prayer request to a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who must show up in your life for this prayer to be answered. I compel that they show up now. And everyone who says over oh, my dead body for this prayer to be answered. May the head open and swallow. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've seen three of you who are here. You've been praying for a job with the Nigerian Immigration Service. You don't yet have the job. The Lord is saying that she will announce to you that the same way you have come here, that is how you will get this job. God does not lie. Believe me. Are there people serving here? Like NYSC? Any that come us? You don't have to come up. Because I'm seeing, I don't know what is going to happen, but I'm seeing many people, like NYC people being retained. Yeah. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus, let it happen by the Spirit. Yeah. I feel a need, I don't know if you will allow me to do that before we pray for the escorts. Amen. <laughs> 
anybody waiting for you to fail, so that ah. they will fail it, they will oh wait in vain. Yeah. May God bring a greater sense of unity yeah. to the Christian officers in this place. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And anyone who is due for promotion, in the name that is above all names, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, Whoever is sitting where it belongs to you, I stand by the back and don't shake it ever. The God that is with you, I overcome. I overcome. I overcome. I the power of the Holy Spirit. I overcome. I overcome. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all the officers who are in the stations outside Nigeria. May God protect them. Amen. It's not dead bodies that will be carried from those nations. In the name of Jesus. Let the covenant of life rest with you. Find favor with the presidency. Find favor with your superiors. In Jesus' name I pray. And I please return back rejoicing. Now I want to declare over the whole house and the Christian community. Please be ready to receive. I'm sorry our time is gone. I pray for everyone who is here present attending this conference. The kind of speed you have never seen in your life. When I speak between now and December, I stand by the God of my people. I push you my process. I push you my process. I push you my process. In the name of Jesus. So your shame receive double. Yeah. And every door that has refused to open, that has been mandated to open for the next level of your lifting, I not only open the door, I scatter the door. Yeah. Me, every project that you are on that is ongoing under your watch. Finish us anointing. May we come upon that project. Whether it's a building project, whether it's a business. Tell me, any business that has gone down, for some of you who have lost money, you have lost opportunities. By prophecy, receive restoration. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the entire Christian community across the Nigerian immigration service. In the name of Jesus, you will remain on top. In the mighty name of Jesus. Specifically, I pray for the chapel of mercy and all who are connected to this grace and this chapel. Let it be for you from glory to glory to glory to glory. Every other church denomination around here, in the name of Jesus, all together, let the body of Christ within this region go and rise from glory to glory. Now, I don't know what is the major issue of concern. You will have to talk with the officers to find out. But at least one thing I know is that at every point in time there is a major need. It may be a threat. It may be something, whatever it is. I stand and release my faith with the company of believers here. Whatever it is that must change for believers to have peace and rest here, we change it now. In the name of Jesus. Right, our time is gone. But where are the escorts, the executives of the, all the escorts of the Chapel of Mercy? Please, if you are an escort, only an escort, we have one minute. Please just come and stand so that I just speak a word over your life. Again, let's stretch our hands. Don't retire, please. Stretch your hands over the executives. These are the people who continue to run the program of God within this place. Please pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for the coordinator. Pray for all of them. Father, in the name of Jesus, they are men and women of character. Protect their families while they serve. In the name of Jesus, they will not serve and go down. They will not be victims of their own message. You will preserve them. As they serve, oh God, serve their children. Service their children, service their families. We declare the blessing of the body of Christ here upon you. In the mighty
mighty name of Jesus. Father, we commit these ones. Grant them grace to continue to do the bidding of the Lord. Amen. Under your watch, may the chapel of mercy and by extension the precept community go from grace to grace. Amen. Salvation by the Spirit. Amen. Sound communication of doctrine by the Spirit. Amen. Building the character of the Spirit. Signs and wonders. Amen. You will walk together as a united force. Amen. The Lord bless you and show you mercy. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. God bless you. <laughs> Finally, I declare over the spiritual climate of Nigeria in vibration service. Hear the word of the Lord. Every planting in this place that is not by God we declare them uprooted. <laughs> and for everyone who has come to this conference, you have fasted, you have prayed, whether you are part of the NIS or you just came as a visitor participating, may fire from heaven rest upon your prayer life. Rest upon your words from your life. That which you seem to see God do in your life. Between now and the end of the year, I release it unto you by prophecy. You have honored me as individuals. You have honored me as much as the praise God has given me here at Nigeria Immigration Service. May the blessings that follow this grace rest upon you. It will be and remain for you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, I sincerely thank you for extending your hand of fellowship every time for me to come and be a blessing and do not take it for granted. The Lord honor you, the Lord lift you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.